Hey guys, Mary from SVG Cuts here with five brand new projects. I'm super excited that they're finally ready to share with you. I've been working on them for what seems like forever because I put a little extra detail into each one, I would say, but honestly, I always do that. So I think um, just each one of them is very standalone and special and it just has taken me a little while longer to come out with this. So I'm super excited that today's the day and um, let's get to it. So the first project that I came out with, came up with for this kit is my Rustic Lantern. Hi Winnie, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I used a candle from Amazon that um, you can see, uh, I'll link it below in this video and on the, uh, the project page for this project and the whole kit. Um, it's a short little candle from Amazon and the top comes off so that you can change the bulb if you need to. And I used chocolate shimmer paper, oops, and um, I used chocolate shimmer paper, which makes it look nice and metallic, which is very cool. And if you wanted to get, get kind of crazy and use um, some kind of distress ink or paint or spray on it, that would be really cool too. I kind of wanted to do that, but I was afraid to mess it up and have to start over again. Um, and take even longer to come out with this video. So um, if you want to do that, if you're comfortable, familiar, or you want to try something new and use some kind of cool, um, distressed, rustic, rusty looking ink or paint or whatever, that would be really cool. Can't wait to see how you make yours. It would also look good in plain cardstock, doesn't have to be shimmery, or it would also look great in black or red for Christmas. Put some Christmas doodads on it too, would be really cool. So I also came up with this barrel, which I'm really happy with how it came out. Um, when I took a picture of it and showed um, some of my friends and my husband, um, people were like, that's a real barrel, right? And I'm like, no, it's a paper project. So it's really cool to get an awesome reaction out of people when you make something. And I had so much fun coming up with this. And um, it's really just brown cardstock and black cardstock. And for the brown pieces, I embossed it with a wood grain embossing folder from Doris. And then I rubbed a lot of light colored, light, medium, and dark colored um, brown inks on it too to make it look really distressed. And um, I love the way it looks. And the rings are just plain black cardstock, which I sprayed with some Tim Holtz Ranger Distress Mica sprays to make them look kind of rustic and antiqued. And I'm really happy with how it came out. So I also came up with a cowboy hat and I think the cool part of this is that um, it's surprisingly easy to put together so if you wanted to make it as a party favor you know make a lot of them you could do that pretty easily and the neat part is that it's designed so that when this when this middle part gets glued onto the brim it naturally um, it causes it to curve already so um, it really has the nice shape of a cowboy hat and you can you know kind of curve it even more a little bit and make it look super cool so that would look great in lighter brown darker brown black whatever you want to do it's gonna look really cool so in the tradition of my other box cards that you guys have made and shared so many pictures of love seeing them love seeing your projects um, I came up with another box card and it's kind of shaped like a vintage trunk and I had a lot of fun adding some cool details with the brads and everything and then I really took my time and made the flowers on the inside look um, look really pretty I like the way that they came out and when you just um, you make your inserts you pop them in and then you can fold it fold it closed and put it in its envelope and um, it's a real wow factor when somebody opens it up and gets it from you. Finally, we have a nice large gift box, gift box, keepsake box, whatever you want to use it for. Um, the, the wow factor is clearly the center part, which is kind of based on a quilt design. So it looks really cool and dimensional. And each part is a strip that you basically glue together in order. Um, and they're all numbered, so it's not, it's not too hard. And it's a nice large format. It's about an 11 and a half by 11 and a half box by about four inches. It's finished off on the inside nicely too, which is nice. 
And since it's a quilt design, I think it could lend itself well to a different theme, such as if you visualize it in ivory with some more delicate um, pastel colors and delicate prints, it could be a baby shower gift, keepsake box for a gift. Um, however you want to do it. It could be Christmas too. That would look really cool. So I can't wait to see when you make yours, how you do it. If you change it up, cool. If you don't, cool. I love, 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 love seeing what you come up with, with your creativity also. So I've got all my pieces cut out to show you how each project goes together. So let's get started. For the cowboy hat project, I've got my pieces cut out and laid out here. The sides of the top of the hat are laid out here and your machine will have cut a number into the bottom tab of each piece to help you line them up properly. And for each one, you want to fold them so that there's this main part here with the three tabs. Then you want to fold it down and down and then up. So each one is folded that way and this one has an extra piece on the top which gets folded up. So we've also got these two pieces, two that look like this, that are identical, and then the brim and the brim trims. I'm going to start by gluing all ten of these sides together, side to side. So to do that, we'll just put glue on all these tabs on piece number one and glue piece number two to it, lining it up nicely and working your way up one tab at a time. So you just want to go ahead and do that for all ten sides.
So now I've got all 10 sides glued together and I'm gonna close up this final seam the same way that I glued them all together. Next, we want to glue this piece down. So I'll do that by putting glue on all these tabs. and aligning the edge of the top with the crease all the way around. So your hat kind of comes down in the front so you know that that is the front where it comes down. Next I'm gonna take these two pieces and glue them together side to side. I'm going to make sure all these bottom tabs are folded up. And then the circle here, we want to align with this circle up here. So on top of some scrap paper, you can set, set it down like I've got it here and put a ring of glue around. And then carefully guide that inside. Next we can take this large piece and there is a score line here but I'm not going to fold it there. I'm just going to use that as a guideline for lining up the other edge. And I'm going to fold these tabs towards myself. And again with the circle in the back. I suppose I goofed. I should have put the circle here. You just want to notice that that is the back, basically. So we're going to glue this piece on top of this piece here. So I'm going to put glue on these tabs. And line it up carefully 
right in the center. And make sure that the front and the back are anchored down in the right spot and then the sides kind of fall into place and cause the rest of it to curve up a little bit. It makes the brim curve up. Then you can flip it over if we're missing any tabs like I am. Add some more glue. Then we can flip it over and glue this piece right onto it. Next, you can glue your trim on, and if you want to, you can kind of curve it a little bit more ahead of time. With my original hat, I really curved these sides up like this. So if you want to do that, you can. You just want to be careful not to crease it, but you can kind of curve it up some more. And then I'm going to put a line of glue, a little squiggly line of glue around the edge, or the, around this shape on the back side. Like so. And then Carefully glue that onto the edge. And then you can kind of keep curving it a little bit more, like so. And then your top fits right on just like this. So that's the front again where it comes down, the back has the seam. Then if you wanted to add some trim, I used some 1 8 of an inch wide deerskin lace that I found at Hobby Lobby. And I used some one eighth of an inch wide double sided craft tape to secure it around the bottom and then I tied it in a little knot like that. For the heirloom quilt box project, if you take a look at the PDF document that came in your download, you can see the, um, the center part of the box with the cool design. I've got all the pieces shown here with folding instructions. So you want to fold all of them as a mountain fold, which is a regular fold like this. Valley fold would be up towards yourself like this. So wherever there's a yellow line, you want to fold it in a valley fold. And then every other fold is regular, a regular mountain fold. So each piece is numbered 1 through 17. And if you, your machine will have cut this number into the tab on each piece. If you want to go ahead and darken that in with a marker or a pen so you can see it better, you can do that. That's what I did. And I, I folded most of them already, but I left a few of them unfolded so that we could do that together a little bit. 
So here's piece number two. And first I'm just going to crease everything regularly, which is a mountain fold. So then if you take a look at the diagram, piece number two has yellow lines on the two ends. So that's where I want to go back and fold those the opposite way. Then I can do the same for piece number four here. And the valley folds in yellow are these two, like that. So here's piece number four. So I've got everything folded, mountain folds. I'll go back and fold this part as well as this part, valley fold. Just like that. So now it matches the diagram for piece number four. Next, if you want to, you can take an ink pad and rub that on the edges of your shapes. I think it looks kind of cool. I did that already to my other pieces here that I pre-folded. You can go as bold as you want or you can skip it all together. If you want to ink every single fold, you can. It takes a little longer, but if that's the look that you want to go for, it's cool. It really um, enhances the dimension in the design if you want to do that. I'm just going to ink around the edge of my shape. However, on my original project, I inked every single fold. So there, 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 everywhere that it's folded, I inked, except not on these um, shimmer pieces. So it's a different look if you want to do even more inking. Next, if you want to lay your pieces out, in order 1 through 17. You can do that so it's easy to start gluing them together and just grab the next one. So here's piece 1 up here. So I've got them all going 1 through 17 just like in my diagram. They're all folded the right way and inked a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and start gluing them together side to side. So to do that I'll just put some glue on the side tabs and start gluing piece one to piece two, one tab at a time. Then I'll put glue on the side tabs of piece two. and take piece three and glue that on one tab at a time. There we 
go. So I'm just gonna work my way down with all of the pieces, gluing them together side to side.
Next for these longer pieces, I'm going to kind of um, do it in sections, mainly because this, this shimmer paper that I'm using is a little bit tougher to glue together. So it's up to you if you wanna do the same thing or not. I'm gonna jump up to the top and do that section and then I'll do the middle one from the inside, from the other side.
So there we go. There's the center of our box lid. Next I've got my lid pieces. These are the four sides. There's two like this and two like this. There are four pieces like this. There's a frame part and then there's this liner. So I'm going to take my quilt design and put that on top of my liner and I'm going to secure the corners and then secure the other tabs right onto it. So I'll start by putting some glue on the underside of two of the corners. And I'm going to line that right up along the edge there. And then I'll do the same thing on the opposite corner. And on the two other corners. So since there's so much going on and so many tabs glued down, your tabs might end up being a little bit a little bit crazy like how this one's not lining up on the side. That is just due to all the variability going on here, so don't worry about it if yours is like that. So next next we're just going to glue the remaining tabs down on the sides. Next I'm going to take my four sides and I'm going to glue them onto the sides with the, the matching ones on opposite sides, just like this, right on top. So you just want to put a line of glue down the side and then line it up as perfectly as possible with the corner lining up on both sides. And go ahead and glue the other three sides on just like that.
Next we can take our frame piece and glue that right onto the front. Next, I'm going to take my four corner pieces and glue them onto the side one by one like this. So just line up the little holes and glue that down. onto the side of each, each side. Next I'm going to form the box, the box shape by closing this up like this. So for all four corners, glue them closed using the same little side pieces that we just glued on. For the trim on the lid, I sprayed the black cardstock pieces with these uh, Tim Holtz Ranger Distress Mica Sprays in pewter and bronze. So they're basically like glimmer, glimmer shimmer spray. And this is how it looks. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue these onto all four sides, two of each. Each one is identical. So just go ahead and glue those down. Next, I'm going to put a brad into each of the four holes. And then you can glue this flap closed. So I'll put some glue on it. And that makes the sides nice and strong and hides those brads as well. So you can go ahead and do that for all four sides. So here's my box lid all prettied up, glued together, nice and sturdy. Now we can put together the bottom of the box, which is made up of four sides that look just like this, four corner pieces, and then two, two squares which make up the bottom. So we can go ahead and glue these flaps down so the large part here with the rounded sides you can go ahead and fold over and glue down for all four
Next, I'm gonna take my four corner pieces and use them to glue the sides together side to side. So now I'm gonna make sure the corners are folding, folding over. And glue this final corner together to make the box shape. So there we have our box bottom. And on top of some scrap paper, we're gonna glue the liner right into the bottom. So there are two squares that are the same exact size. And I'm gonna put a line of glue around the outside edge. And put that face down inside my box. Then I'll flip it over, cover the bottom with glue, and glue the remaining square right onto the bottom. So there's our box bottom, just like the top except a lot simpler, and the top fits right onto it. For the Rustic Lantern project, I've got the base of my candle here, which I got on Amazon. It looks like this. It comes with a little bulb and this base. You can see the exact link on where to get it on the product page in our website for the Rustic Lantern or for the Wildflower Saloon SVG kit. So first I'm gonna work with these three pieces. There's this one, it's the largest piece of the lantern. Then there's this and this large piece here. I've got these small pieces here. I'm gonna glue them on first onto this piece while it's nice and flat. So I'll just put some glue on each one of them and glue them onto the sides. Just adds a little nice detail to your project. Next, I'm gonna glue this closed 
by putting some glue on the side tab and gluing it here. I'm also going to take this shape like this and glue that right onto this part. Next, I'm going to take my candle and feed it through. And I want the cord coming through this little gap here. I'm going to bend these out of the way a little bit and close this bottom. And then put some glue on these. This part's gonna be hidden, so if it gets a little messy, don't sweat it. Then bend these back over, and then carefully flip your project over with the cord still going through that little spot and push down from the inside onto those tabs. So you can carefully flip it over and take a look and these tabs should be glued down just like that. Now you can carefully feed your candle into place and then you can carefully get the top over the candle and put some glue on these tabs and close up the top just like this. Next, I've taken this piece and folded it like this. I'm going to loop it around the cord and put some glue on this little tab. And glue it closed. Next, if you want, you can angle your seam so that it's more in the back of your project and then just carefully carefully feed it down so that it's like this. And then you can carefully flip it over and we're going to glue the bottom onto these tabs. So First, let's anchor it down on just one of them, and on the opposite side of the cord is the front. So I'm going to anchor the bottom to this front tab first. Next, I'm going to glue the bottom down. I took this box that the candle came in as something to set my project on. Hopefully that'll be kind of helpful. So all we want to do is put glue on these tabs and fold this down so that the bottom is nice, nice and finished. Next, I'm going to take this little piece and cover the bottom of it with glue and glue it right onto 
the top side of that trim down there. Next, I'm going to take the piece that looks like this and glue it closed. Then I'm going to bend these tabs out of the way and put some glue around the inside. and bend them back over. And glue it down like this. This shimmer paper can be a little tricky. I had to open some of these up and add more glue. But now you've got this piece and we'll cover this with glue. and place that right in the center. So there's the bottom of our lantern. If you want, you can put your little bulb back in and you can even plug it in if you want. It's not necessary, but some of these bulbs are a little longer than others. If you wanted to just trim the very skinny part off the top, you can. Next, I've got this piece that looks like this, as well as this one. And first, I'm going to close this up with some glue on the side tab. Then I'm, I'm holding it as it's drying and I'm going to flip these out. And then close this up. Then I'm going to feed these together like this. And glue down each of these tabs on the inside. If you're using shimmer paper like I am, you might have to hold it for a few extra seconds as it dries. Next, I'm going to take this piece here, the sides folded over, and put a nice healthy amount of glue on each of the tabs. And then fold them over so that they're kind of at a right angle. And carefully maybe fold them over a little bit more and carefully feed that inside and hold it down for a few extra seconds more than you normally would as it's drying You can kind of gently, gently squeeze it a little bit to make sure that those tabs are taking hold. And then when you feel like it's not going to slip, slip out of place, you can 
go in and squeeze it from the inside also. If you feel like you've got some extra glue sticking out, which happens to me all the time, I'll take a, a straight pin or um, just really anything that's small and easy to scrape. And before the glue is dry, you can always kind of get it off a little bit. Next, we can take this piece and this little one and glue that right onto this as a trim. Then we can put some glue on the side and glue that closed. Next, I'm gonna take these three pieces and first I will glue this closed. As well as this piece. Next I'm going to glue this right onto the top there. Then I'm going to take this piece here with the, the circles near the bottom and I'm going to, first I'm going to bend these backwards. And put some glue on these top ones. and glue that right in the center. Next I'm going to take a little bit of this wire here. This is about 20, 20 gauge or 16 gauge. Thicker or thinner will work just fine. It's about 5 or 6 inches. and. Basically, I just want to make a little loop like this. I probably cut off too much, but we'll just feed that through. And twist it around. Trim off the excess. And then you can kind of shape it so that so that it looks cute. Next, I'm going to glue these tabs down, glue the, the top to these.
Next, I'm going to glue these together with these tabs on the inside of this part. And you just want it to be so that the handle has this on the side and that on the side. So I'll bend these back inside, feed it through, and start gluing them down. Next, I'm going to put the vellum part of the lantern together. So I've got my piece of vellum here, as well as these two pieces with all the teeth tabs, and this small piece and this circle with a circle. So what we want to do is bend over each of these little teeth on both of these pieces. Next, I'm gonna close this up, and there's a tiny little score line right here, and you don't need to fold it, that's just a guideline for where to put your glue and where to line up the other side. And again, if you're using shimmer paper like me, you're gonna to have to give it a little extra time to dry. And go ahead and do the same with the other piece. Next, on top of some scrap paper, you can set your, your two rings down like this. And I'm going to put a somewhat generous ring of glue around the outside. and feed that right in from the top. It's a nice, nice snug fit and you can press down on the top as it's drying. And then I'll do the same with the other piece. Next for your piece of vellum, if you look closely, there's a score line right here, and you don't want to you don't want to fold it there. You just want to use that as a guideline for placing your adhesive. You could glue on vellum if you want. The glue is going to be more obvious. If you have some double-sided craft tape, that would be perfect to just put a line right here. You want to get it really close to that line. I happen to have this vellum adhesive runner by Thermoweb. Um, I looked all over the internet and I cannot find it anymore. Um, but people online also said that just plain old uh, double-sided craft tape is pretty comparable. So if you've got this, awesome. If not, if you've got some tape, that's cool. 
or in a pinch, glue, glue will do, because this seam's gonna be in the back, so um, hopefully I can do this carefully without being able to get my face right up in this thing. So basically you just wanna put a line of adhesive along here. So it looks like I did a pretty good job getting it right up on that line. So then you wanna just line up the other side along that same little line. And that just forms your little cone, cone shape. Next, I'm gonna put a very thin little line of glue on the inside of this piece. And then with the seam lined up with the back seam of my project, I'm gonna slide it right onto my vellum. So I'm gonna set this aside and let it, let it dry. Next for my two handles, I've got them folded on all of the score lines. There are also some trim pieces. There are two like this and two like this. I went ahead and glued the skinny one on top of the bigger one here. And then I'm gonna glue the other one on just like that. And then I've got my two handles like this. You can see the tabs here, there's the longer part down here, and there's a side tab on the inside. And I'm gonna go ahead and glue, glue this trim onto here, as well as this one onto here. Next, I'm gonna assemble each handle like this. So I'm gonna put glue on this tab and glue it like this. And then glue on this tab and this tab and glue it down like this. As well as the same thing on the underside. So I'll put glue here and here and glue it closed, just like that. If you need to flatten it to squeeze it, you can do that. So here's my one handle. You can see it's all together and how the four tabs on the outside are bent backwards. So you can go ahead and do the same with the other handle. Next I'm going to take this piece and this piece and with the seams lined up in the back, I'm going to carefully, carefully without creasing it, feed that inside. just like this. It actually stays together really nicely. You don't have to glue it. And then we can glue this right onto this bottom piece that we made. So I want these to be on the sides. So I'm holding the sides. This is the front. That's the back. And I'm going to put my seam in the back when I glue it on. And I'm gonna look down from the top and make sure that those circles are lined up on the inside. So I'll cover this bottom with glue. And once I position it, I'm gonna hold it for some extra time and press down gently from the top as it dries.
Next, I'm going to take this piece and my two handles, and I'm going to feed it through kind of like a brad so that those two tabs go through, and then open it up and glue those two tabs down on the inside. So I glued both tabs down from the inside. I'm going to do the same thing with the other handle. Next I'm going to glue these pieces together. And as you can see, this is the front because I've got the trim, the handle trim facing me. And this is the back of this. I want that in the back. And these handles are on the side, which are going to line up with the handles. So we're going to glue we're going to put glue on here and glue it inside here. And after I put the glue on it, I'm going to look down from the top at those two octagons that you can see inside. And you can make sure that it's lined up really precisely that way. So I'll go ahead and cover this in some glue. And then I'll be holding on to it for a few extra seconds as it dries, especially because of the shimmer paper that I'm using. And I can see that those are lined up just right. So I'm going to hold it like this for a little while. Next, I'm going to feed the bottom of the handles through, just like we did up at the top, as if they were brads, with those two, two little tabs through. And then I'll glue them down on the inside. So I'll put some glue underneath and hold it down for both of them, for both handles. Next I've got these two trim pieces, which are these rings that crisscross around your lantern. And if you look closely, you can see on the end of each one, it tapers off and it's rounded slightly. There's also a very small score line right here which you don't need to fold, but you can use that as a guideline for where to put your glue and where to match up the other side of it. And that is on both of the sides. So what we want to do is one at a time, feed it around and put some glue right on that little area below the line. And line up the other side just right on that line and hold it while it dries. Then I'll do the same thing with the other piece. So feed it through. And put some glue just under the little guideline and glue that right on the line. Then you basically want these to be crisscrossing with the seams lining up somewhat with the back seams. So I'm going to use, I could do a dot of glue. I'm going to do an adhesive dot. right on that seam. And crisscross the other one on top of it. Now 
And then I'm going to put another one right underneath it. So then you can leave it loose if you want, or you could try to fix it down if you want. I left my original one loose. You can go either way. Next, I've taken a piece of wire. It's about mm, 12 to 14 inches long. You can make it shorter if you want. That looks cute too, or longer. But what you wanna do is feed the end through this hole carefully. Maybe I'll curve it out. And then if, I'm sure you've got a pencil handy. If you have one of these kind of tools handy, that's good. If you have one of these, even better. I'm going to wrap the end of this wire around just to create a little spiral so that it has something to stop it from coming out of that hole. So I'll just do the same thing on the other side. And then reshape my little wire a little bit. So now you can take your base and put the top right on. So you might have to finagle it a little bit. It's a nice tight snug fit and you really only need to take it apart if you need to change your bulb in your candle. And of course, you don't want to leave it unattended just to be extra safe, even though I don't think it gets, I don't think it gets too hot, but of course, play it safe on the safe side and don't leave it on and unattended. So there you go. Super cute. I hope you love yours. Can't wait to see a picture of yours. For the trunk of Wildflowers box card, I've got all the shapes cut out and in your PDF menu document that comes with your download there's this page for this project and it shows how the front gets embellished insert one insert two in the inside of the back so I'm gonna go ahead and put these together like this and put some of the flowers together and then put the box part together so first I'm going to start by putting some ink on the edges of some of my flowers and it's really up to you if you want to do that or not and if you want to go kind of bold with it or a little more subtle. I'm going to use this ink pad here and these are by Colorbox, they're called Cat's Eye ink pads. I usually get them on Amazon and there's a little stack of them. You can get them singly or in a stack which they call a queue. So I think it adds a really nice effect on a lot of shapes. I'm going to rub some ink in the center of this daisy type flower. So it's optional, but I think it makes it look more, more realistic and prettier. as well as on this shape. I'm gonna go kind of bold and use this dark pink. I 
as well as a little bit on the edges of this shape, these shapes of this flower. So you could go ahead and just glue it together with regular glue. I'm going to add a little more dimension with these 3D foam squares, which are sticky. And just peel the backing off and then put that right near the bottom. Then I've got some pretty little iridescent pearls. They're orange from Queen and & Company. And I'm going to put maybe three of them clustered together here. I don't know if there's room for three. I guess so. So on my original card I used smaller smaller ones. You could do one, you could do a couple. It's up to you. Then in the center of these pink ones, I'm going to use these pretty quartz stones, also from Queen and Company. I'm also going to fold these a little bit, just gently curve them to add some more dimension. And then I'm going to glue these together just stacked up. There's really not a perfectly right or wrong way to orient them when you're affixing them together. I mean these edges do kind of line up, but you don't have to do it that way. Then I'm going to add some more dimension with some more 3D squares. Then with these two parts of this flower, I'm going to just gently curve each little petal. Then I'll put some glue on the back side of one of them and glue them one on top of the other. Next, for all the leaves, I'm going to rub a, a darker green ink pad on the edges of most of them. Then for the leaves that you can do this to, such as these, I'm going to gently curve them a little bit to add some more dimension. I've also got the front and side panels here, and I'm also going to rub an ink pad on those. I've got a dark blue one. Again, totally optional, but I feel like it adds a nice finishing edge. 
kind of a vignette to the shapes. And if you really just wanted to get like a, if you don't have a lot of ink pads and you're interested in doing this, I think you could pretty much rub a medium brown all over everything, usually. That's that's what I used to always do. I used to just always rub a brown ink pad on everything, <clears throat> which is totally cool too. If you want to get a little more cray cray, you can uh, get the different colors. Or maybe you already have them. So I've got this piece here. This is the front and the side and a side tab. I'm going to go ahead and glue the front pieces on. And as you can see, these little holes line up. And then this will be the other side. Next I'm going to take one of my leaves, these are the same, and put some glue there, and glue that down. As well as the smaller, the smaller one of these. right about there and one of my pink flowers I'm going to use some more dimensional squares next I'll take insert number one here it's got a little one cut out of the side to help you identify it if it helps So I'm going to layer it up like this, and again, you can take a look at your PDF. It shows you a little picture of what it looks like. And these guys get layered up just like this. And then this leaf goes here. This one goes here and this flower goes right about there. So I'm going to glue and or 3D square them together. These 3D squares that I have come with two different sizes. So I'm going to use a bigger one.
So there's our insert number one. And I'll do the same thing for insert number two. And again, it shows in your PDF the different little flowers and stuff. So we can glue this guy here. It's the one left that's got the wider stem. And I'll glue this leaf piece right here, as well as this piece here. Then I'll glue this daisy type flower onto the circle like this. I'm going to take a peek at the back and make sure it's pretty much centered. And then I'm going to use one of these really cute black and white checkered gingham adhesive button things from Queen and Company. On my last card I used um, a wooden bead that I have from Hobby Lobby. I think you could do whatever you want. It's going to look super cute. And then we can glue this here or make it more dimensional if you want. Next I've got the back panel pieces here which I cut out of this cool wood patterned paper. And as you can see in your PDF, this is the way that it goes on the back. At the top, it's flush, and then there's a little bit of a border around the placement of each of those. We'll do that here in just a minute. Then I've also got my back panel, which I'm going to rub a dark brown ink pad around the edges of. And I've already gone ahead and rubbed a brown ink pad on the edges of these. So here's my back inside of my box card. I'm going to fold it where it's scored. I can go ahead and glue my back panel on the inside, right in the center here. And then glue my other side piece on. The shorter one of these goes at the top. Up there. And up here. And if I had, when they come off your mat, if you want to keep them more um, aligned, then you don't have to figure it out like this. But either way. Then these two little pieces kind of finish the, the curve where the stamped oval can go. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these down.
Next, I'm going to stamp on my circle, or my oval. I've got this stamp from the Hero Arts, um, what is it? Thanks a Bunch stamp set by Hero Arts. And I think I might as well ink the edge of that a little bit since I did it to everything else. Glue that right on the front, or right on the, right in the center of the back. Next, I'm going to glue them together here. Like so. And then... I'm going to put some brads in, not all of them yet, but on my original card, I used different brads for the little handle areas. For this one, I'm just going to use all the same, just to simplify it, and I think I'm out of those other ones. Anyway, so these are some Tim Holtz brads, they're called Long Fasteners, and I'm going to start by just putting some brads in the front as well as right here and right here. Next I'm going to glue this branch piece onto the back with a few dots of glue just maybe just around here just to secure it pretty well. But not that it needs to be um, completely glued down perfectly. And then I'm gonna glue this piece right up here And then these, like, right about there. So next I'm going to take insert number two here and put some glue on this one side tab and I'm going to glue it right here so that the back of the tab is flush with the back of the box and so that those two holes line up right here. You can go ahead and put your bread right here as long as you open it up so that it's not interfering with the uh, the other part of it there just like that and the same thing on the other side And you can make sure that it's going to fold flat both ways. Next I'm going to glue insert number one in the same way, just like this. So for my previous box cards, it's really up to you how you want to do it. Usually I would close it up and then I would put glue on these two side tabs and then insert it in like this. So you want the back of the tabs flush with the front of the piece and behind it there. You could do it that way if you've done my box cards before and that's how you like to do it. Another option is to 
kind of do it the way we just did the last one. And you want to make sure that it's nice and perpendicular and that this is lined up here and that it's not sticking up over the top or anything. And the same on the other side. This way, you might think this way is easier or not easier. It's really up to you how you want to assemble it as long as you get this piece in there like so. And you can make sure that it's going to fold flat both ways. And then we can close up the box shape. Super cool. So now that all that's left to do is put these little corner pieces on and you actually don't want to glue them down because then your card will have a hard time closing potentially. So what I'm going to do is just secure them with brads. So all I'm going to do is put it into place and the four that are at the bottom are shaped like this and then the four at the top are shaped like this. So you can just go ahead and do the same thing for all four of the corners. So there you have it. All of my corners are finished looking pretty and you can fold it like this to put it inside your, if you fold it this way this is kind of fragile, so you want to fold it like that to put it inside your envelope, which I went ahead and put together. You can fold this down. You're going to have to fold, fold that if it's sticking up. I should have not had my leaf sticking up past there. I'll go back and put a note in this video about that. But it slides into your envelope just like this. And the way that you make your envelope, which I already went ahead and did, is you can see that it cuts out of a, a sheet of paper like this. There's the top, the two sides, and the bottom. You're going to fold the sides in, fold the bottom up, and affix it, and you'll have this. Then you can slide your card in, close it up. Next for the Whiskey Barrel Project, it has 18 sides, and there's the bottom part, and there's the lid looks like this. So all 18 sides look like this except for two of them which look like this and this and these are these are designed this way so that they line up with these holes here for you to put the brads through otherwise the rest of them look just like this and the lid is the same same design it's just uh, much shorter so all 18 of them look just like this, except for one and two, which look like that. I'm going to start by creasing along the fold line on all the side tabs and the bottom tab for all 18 sides.
as well as all 18 sides of the lid. Next I'm going to run them through my embossing folder that's a wood grain. This is a 5x7 wood grain background embossing folder by Doris. And there are a lot of different embossing machines out there. Mine happens to be a Big Shot by Sizzix. I believe they look a little bit different nowadays. I think they're like gray and white, but same thing. There's lots of other brands out there. Maybe you have something different. So I'm going to put my sides in like this. It doesn't need to be perfect. However your embossing machine works is great. However, you don't have to do this, but something that I did, since these shapes don't all fit in the folder all the way, I'm going to leave a little bit sticking out so that it's not a harsh cutoff where the design stops as I put it through my embossing machine. Then I can kind of overlap the design when I run it through a second time. Not terribly necessary, but you see how it kind of tapers off and the texture there? That way I can kind of make it look like and kind of make it look more blended together. So I'm going to overlap that a little bit, like so. And since this project is very rustic, I don't think it needs to be super scientifically perfectly embossed. And again, I'm gonna leave, I'm leaving the edge out just a little bit to soften the transition there. And one thing to note is that this, this embossing folder is um, not very deep. Like the, the pattern is not super duper deep in it. So when, when you emboss something with it, you can still fold. I know there are some other embossing folders out there that have a deeper design, and then if you try to fold it, it has a tendency to crack the paper. So if you wanna do a test, do something on a test sheet ahead of time to make sure that it's gonna work for you with, if you're gonna emboss it with a different folder, you can do that. On the other hand, if it does crack a little bit, you could kind of you could kind of tape it from the inside with some craft tape or even, you know, heaven forbid, scotch tape. Not archival, but works. You could do that. Or even some dark washi tape. And also, if this project gets a little bit um, cracked like that, if that happens to you, then it's just even more rustic as long as it's not falling apart. So go ahead and do that to all 18 of your sides for the lid and the bottom. And then you can do whatever you feel like. It's your project. Here's what I did on mine is I have a light brown ink pad and I just rubbed that down in a, a streak. Whoa, that one, came, that one came out quite a bit, but that's fine. It's actually better if they're all slightly different. I think. And I'm starting with light, then I'm going to go to medium, and then dark, so that I don't get my light colored ink pad stained with darker ink. If you want to avoid inking the tabs, that's a good idea, because sometimes I've noticed that um, it's hard to glue on top of ink sometimes. So. I'm just gonna streak that on there a little bit here and there, make it maybe different on each one. And then for my dark brown, I have, it's called sepia black. It's almost completely black. And I'm just gonna very lightly do a couple streaks or not, not even lightly. It's actually 
it's pretty cool when it's messy. If you take a look at an aged whiskey barrel or barrel or whatever, they have a tendency to have a lot of different, different things going on like that. Out of all these circles in the design, there are some larger ones. There's one smaller one. Well, it's not a circle, it's almost a circle. I also ran that through my embossing folder and did the streaky ink on that as well. So, next we can glue these together side to side. To do that, I'm gonna put glue on all these tabs and I'm starting with the one that has the holes in its tabs. And that one needs to be glued onto the piece that has holes in it. Then after that, the rest of the pieces are identical and you can glue them together side to side just like this. So I lined up the bottom nicely and I'm just working my way up to the top, carefully lining it up with the edge right along the crease. So one more time, I'll do that again, and then you're just gonna do the same exact thing for all 18 pieces. my helper. Hi. Welcome to the craft party. Winnie helps me do everything as long as she's not sleeping. Now I've got all 18 sides of my barrel glued together. I'm just going to close up this final seam here the same exact way that I glued all the sides together. So I'll just put glue on all these tabs, anchor the bottom, work my way up to the top. I might jump up to the top a little bit early to make sure that that's anchored too. Either way. So now I'm going to glue the lid sides together the same way, it's just a lot shorter. Now I've got two pieces that look like this. I've got this small circle, 18 sided circle if that's the thing, and then two rings that are the same and my sides are together. So I've got two like this, I want to fold all of these over. And I'm creasing each one between sections, like so. I've already gone ahead and done that with the other one. And then I'm just going to glue them together side to side, except the inside is going to be visible. So I want to I actually want to glue the tab on the outside. So like this. And same thing on the other side.
Now I want to fold these top, the shorter top tabs away from myself. We're going to leave the bottom ones the way they are. So I've got this piece looking like this. I'm going to glue this on the inside. So on top of some scrap paper, I'm going to put a ring of glue around the edge of the underside. And then with the corners lined up, I'm going to feed that inside this shape. And it's a nice snug fit. Then I can flip it over and I'm going to glue this ring around with the corners lined up also. So on the inside, I'm going to put a ring of glue and carefully feed that down and around. And then I'm going to flip this piece over and I'm going to glue this with the corners lined up nicely right down inside there. So I'll put a ring of glue around the outside edge and the tabs are not going to overlap, it's just going to fit together just right. And I'm pressing down from the inside to make sure it's taking hold and all that good stuff. So now this piece can go on as a finishing ring. So I'll cover this top in glue and put that on. So at this point, if you wanted to add a little more distressing, you can. I think that's a good idea. I'm going to mostly just get the edges a little bit. It can be streaky and uneven. It looks even better that way, I think. Next, I've got two pieces like this left. Those are the bottom of the barrel. So on top of some scrap paper, first I want to make sure these are really folded over and pretty much, pretty much just flat. And then I'm going to take the one that has the sides and cover the edge with a line of glue. Maybe two. And you might have to curve it a little bit. Carefully feed that down inside. Do your best to line up the edges. Or line up the corners, rather. And then you can flip it over and cover the bottom with glue, and then glue the final circle onto the bottom.
I'm spraying the rings of my barrel with these two sprays. It's like glitter, glimmer, shimmer spray. These happen to be um, Tim Holtz Ranger Distress Mica Sprays. This one's brushed pewter. This one is antiqued bronze. They came in a three pack with another one. I'm just gonna kind of messily spray them on my project. For the rings of the whiskey barrel, there are eight, is it eight? Yep, there's eight pieces that are kind of slimmer, and then there are some that are a bit wider. So the ring at the top and the ring at the bottom are wider, the other four are slimmer. So let's start with the slimmer rings, and I'm going to lay them out first so that I know where they're going. So. We want the two circles to be in the center of our table, sort of, to see what's what. As you can see on this end, these corners are pointed corners. So we want that on the left side. This one, this one, same thing, pointed corners, holes on the inside. Here's the holes on the inside here. But over here we've got rounded corners. This is a tab that we're gonna to use to glue because it's tapered and curved. So I want the holes in the center, but I want this tapered part over here. So let's lay them all out like that. We've got corners here. And my pieces are all bent, bend bent, <laughs> bended and um, twisted a little bit because I sprayed them and I let them dry for a long time and they just, they curled up, but it's gonna to be totally fine. In case you're wondering so holes we want this on this side we've got holes we've got tapers we've got holes and tapers and we've got holes and corners so the rings near the center are more these rings are mirror images of each other, and then this one and this one and this one are mirror images of each other. These are a bit more flat. These are a bit more curved. Not that you really need to know that, but um, that is how you can tell which one is which, and I'll tell you right now. This is more flat, which is in the center. This is more curved, which is the top. This is curved down, this is the bottom, this is the bottom center. So if you're looking at it like this, this is this, that's that, that's that, and that's that. But that's only half. The other half is over here. Just like... So you can see th this one's a bit more straight. This one's more curved. The straighter one goes closer to the center. The straighter one goes closer to the center. So this is how the rings are gonna go on the barrel. So this top ring, again, is this ring, which is part of the lid. So, we are going to put that together. You can glue it if you want. However, I'm just gonna go for it. Um, these are Tim Holtz brads. They're called long fasteners. And as you can see, it's curving up this way. I'm gonna put it on the bottom of my project right here and here and then making sure that it's lined up nicely 
you don't have to glue it down all the way. I think if you glue it down all the way, it might cause the ring to be more, um, not look as curved. You can certainly do that if you want to, or if you want to put a couple of dots of glue. I'm only going to affix it just once here in the back. Just like this. Pretty cool. So next, I'll take the next one down, which is also curving up, and I will put that right here on my barrel. As well as right here. Next I'm going to put a dot of glue, like a large dot of glue, on the tapered tab part of my ring and glue that together. Then once it's dry, I'm going to set it down and make sure that it looks pretty even. And then I'm going to put some glue underneath it right there. So I'll just put a little dab just to hold it in place right there. So I'll do that for my other, other rings here. And my final curved downward ring here. Next for the top and the bottom bands, rings of my barrel, they're a little bit wider. I'm gonna do those now. It's these pieces, and again, the two holes are in the center, and any tapered tabs are gonna be on the right side of the project. This has a tapered side with no holes. Here's holes with a tapered side, another mystery piece and then holes with corners. So these are going like this and then we want the tapered 
tabs on the right side here. So if you had to match this up, you would put this here and you would put this here. So this is how that goes. So let's put some glue here, glue these together. And let's go ahead and glue this to this. If you take a look at the back side, it should be pretty symmetrical, hopefully. We can glue the other ones together. And then this is going to go on the top of our lid. I'm actually going to secure it here with a little glue, lining up those holes. And wrap it around. I'm going to line up these holes with each other, line them up here, and Put two brads in. You can totally keep using the same brads that you've used for the rest of it or if you want to use some bigger ones you can. That's what I did. I have a couple of these cool industrial looking brads left over. So I'm going to do that. And then you can press this down. It'll probably just stay by itself. That's what I did with my original one. It's a snug fit, it should stay. But if you want to secure it with a little glue or some kind of adhesive, you can go for it. Next, I'm gonna flip my barrel over and do the same thing on the bottom. So I've got my bread through a little too early there. Basically, I want to just feed this through all three holes for one and then the other. And again, if you would like to secure this maybe with some glue on the back side to keep it up. You can do that. And there is your barrel. Awesome. So that's it. That's how to put together all five of the projects. I hope you have a great time doing it, getting creative. I would love to see a picture of your project on our Facebook page, Instagram, put it on your blog and pin that on Pinterest, however you like to share. I always love seeing and so do the rest of our crafty friends. So thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time and happy crafting.